Bismillah, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praise due to Allah. And we ask for his peace and blessings on our beloved Prophet and our leader Muhammad Sallallahu and upon his family and companions. Uh, the scholars say that Allah hid four things in four things. He hid his pleasure and acts of obedience. And that means that amongst all of the different ways that we uh, are called to worship Allah, prayer, fasting, charity, sacrifice, service, uh, pilgrimage, etc. Amongst all of the different diverse ways that Allah has called us to obey Him and worship Him, amongst those actions, He has hidden His riba, hidden His good pleasure, meaning that you may do one good deed, and if you do it with the proper amount of sincerity, and if providence uh, embraces you as you may hope, you may gain the good pleasure of Allah through one action of good. And that obviously is only by the grace of Allah. And the reason he did that is so that we not belittle any good deed. We don't say, well, I just, you know, gave $10 to the poor, or I, I just visited my mother, or I just prayed in the middle of the night. It was just prayer. That we not belittle actions of good that Allah enables us to do. You're all familiar with the narrative of the woman who was an unchaste woman, uh, and although she had her struggles of chastity, she gave a dog to drink water out of her boot and Allah gave her paradise for that. So this is an example of an action of good where Allah grants a person his good pleasure even though it was outwardly just another action of good. He also hid his displeasure amongst acts of disobedience, meaning amongst a multitude of ways that Allah has cautioned us of behaving, meaning things that Allah has prohibited us from doing sinful actions. Amongst the different types of sinful actions, Allah has hidden His displeasure, meaning that we may do one action that displeases Allah and unknowingly gain His wrath. May Allah save us from that. And in this regard, the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, tells us, one of you will say a word, pay no mind to it, and it will drag him or her 70 falls, 70 degrees down into the hellfire. And the reason Allah hid His displeasure is so that we not belittle any act of, any act of disobedience. Because if we knew for sure, like, oh, this one thing, if I do it, Allah's going to be displeased with me, then we would just avoid that one and, and we would do everything else. They say that he also hid the awliya in the creation. أَخْفَ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ fi خَلْقِهِ That he hid the people who he has granted a special type of love, a special type of relationship, sainthood, if you will, he hid those people amongst the creation, and we know through rigorously authenticated hadith that there are certain people when Allah loves them, He calls Gabriel, tells Gabriel that He loves them, Gabriel loves them, they are made beloved in the heavens and beloved in the earth, and vice versa, for time's sake to paraphrase, that if Allah hates a servant, they are made hated in the aforementioned ways. But that's not announced. There's not like a, a you know, a tweet doesn't go out. There's not a post that goes up that say, Inna Allah qad ahabba fulana, Allah loves so and so. So we don't know who the servants that Allah has taken a special type of relationship with, we don't know who those people are. Why did He hide them? He hid them so that we not belittle anybody. You should never look at anybody with spite, with a type of minimized attitude to where you think, no, this person can never be a wali of Allah. Even if you saw that person in a state last night, that you deem displeasing, you don't know what happened between them and their Lord since you saw them last. And finally, he hid Laylatul Qadr in the nights of the year. The dominant opinion is that the Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, is on the 27th of Ramadan. Uh, and this was the opinion of many of the Salaf. There is an opinion that it moves every year. We are instructed to look for it in the last 10 days of Ramadan, instructed to look for it in the, the odd nights of Ramadan, in the odd nights of the last 10 days particularly. And you are all familiar with that difference of opinion. The night of power is a night uh, that is described as better than alfi shahr, a thousand months. So it's 83 plus years of worship that you do in one night. So why did Allah hide Laylatul Qadr in the nights of the year? Because if you knew for sure that it was on such and such night, as many of us uh, hope that it's on the 27th and look for it on the 27th, we would worship Allah on that night and perhaps be negligent or fall short on other nights. And for this reason, the poet said, if people knew the power of the night, they would realize that every night is the night of power. Meaning that every night you have an opportunity to be with your Lord, to worship your Lord, to prostrate to your Lord, to thank your Lord, 
to seek the forgiveness of your Lord. And so we need to develop a more, uh, a more magnifying attitude, more reverence and veneration around night and day and time in general as opportunities to worship Allah. Having said that, we hope that Allah lets us pray this year on Laylatul Qadr. As the Prophet ﷺ tells us, whoever stands in the night on Laylatul Qadr, uh, believing in Allah and anticipating a reward, will be forgiven their past sins. As Allah subhanahu and yukirmana wa yakum bi dhalik. I ask Allah that He honor us and honor you with standing on the night of power. Inna huwa liyu dhalik wal qadr alayh. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ramadan mubarak.